welcome back welcome back please give a like and a subscribe so we can keep the channel growing so the next thing we're going to be looking at um, website requirements so what does the term requirements mean this is the first thing you should have in your document ideally and you're going to reference it again we reference because the information that we're putting into our documents we did not come up with that new information we found it somewhere else even if it was told to you by someone else it's not your information right so ideally you want to go find a good definition read it understand it rewrite it and also reference it so Essentially, requirements are the things that most or all websites need to be able to do, the things that they, they should be good at, right? So the list I have here, uh, they need to be user-friendly, they need to be consistent, they need to be navigational, they need to be customizable, and finally, they need to be flexible. So the first thing we have is user-friendly. So again, we're going to go back to defining what user-friendliness means for websites. So give a sentence or two of what it means for a website to be user-friendly. So is this website user-friendly? If so, how? So the website that you're looking at, in my case, I believe it was Amazon. If the definition of user-friendliness makes sense, you're able to read it, understand it, rewrite it, you now look at your website and say, is this user-friendly? Yes or no? You state the things that make it user-friendly. For example, Amazon for me, I think is very user-friendly. The mobile app, the mobile website, the desktop app, the desktop website, very user-friendly. The main thing that I think people go to Amazon to do is to look for stuff. Now, when looking for stuff, the main thing you want to have is a good search bar, right? That search bar is very big at the top, very clear, highlighted very well. I can click in there. Um, this, this is stuff I've been looking for in the past, right? Nokia G50, Motorola G50, Motorola G82. But let's just say I wanted to look for something completely different. RTX 3070 Ti. 3070 Ti, here we go, 700 pounds, right? It finds exactly what I want, it finds at a decent price. That's one of the things for me that makes this web website user-friendly. Now you need to go look at your websites and see what makes your website user-friendly. Next we have consistency for the website. So again, I'm gonna keep repeating this, define what consistency means for a website because there's no point in you speaking about something without the reader having any knowledge prior to what this thing is. So that's, that's like me explaining to someone who's never heard AI, a concept of AI, because these are essentially concepts of, what's this, website requirements. You have to explain the thing first. So again, go through and explain what consistency means for a website. And is your website consistent? If so, how is it consistent? If I go back to Amazon, right? This is the Amazon homepage. Right, that's very clear that this is an Amazon page because it has the name there, it has all the information I need. If I go to today's deals, I can still tell that this is an Amazon website, right? Because it looks more or less the same. If I shrink this down to a mobile website type looking format, I can still tell that this is Amazon. It doesn't work quite well on here. If I go to the gift ideas, I can still tell that this is an Amazon website. So that's what it means to be consistent. The text is the same across all the web pages, uh, the font, the colors, the big search bar at the top is visible everywhere. The, the way things are laid out in different categories is the same. So that's what it means to be consistent. It is the same on mobile as well. So I tried to show the mobile thing. It didn't work very well. But just imagine on a mobile device, it looks more or less the same. It doesn't matter what page or section of the Amazon website I go to, it's going to still look the same. So next, we have navigation for websites. So again, we define what navigation is. We define what navigation is for websites. And I forgot to put reference it, right? Once we have that, does this website have any navigation? If yes, where is it? And is it well-placed? Is it effective? Does it work? Those are the questions you need to answer to fill this section out. Now, again, each of these bullet points I've mentioned here, they don't need to be more than about, let's say, two, three sentences each, a mini paragraph each, right? Because when you put all of this together, you're going to get one nice paragraph for this entire website requirement thing. So let me go back to Amazon. Does Amazon have navigation? 100 million percent, yes. This entire top row, these are navigation buttons, okay? I can move around the website very easily from these. Um, so maybe do a screenshot of this showing one of the navigation buttons, or you could click on here, and this shows you most of the places that you can get to on the Amazon website. Maybe screenshot this side instead, and then maybe show that when I go to, for example, Prime Video, so I'm going to hover my mouse over this, screenshot that, and when you click on the arrow, 
screenshot this part as well so that when you go over to what did i do prime video it carries you to this new section so navigation definitely does work it is 100 percent effective because it, it it takes me less clicks to get there so i can maybe type in let's see if this works uh prime video here and see if it takes me to prime video it does however if i didn't know that was a thing typically most websites have a navigation button and from the navigation button you can simply click on there um, and go to the options you want that's what I would do for navigational because you can move around the website and that's what navigation is being able to to, to traverse being being able to move through being able to move around a certain thing next we have customizable just like before what does customizable mean for a website is your website customizable in my case Amazon if so, how is it customizable? Uh, this is one example I have. I know for IGN, when I log in, I can change a theme. So it's specific to me. That's how I can customize it. Does the website uh, provide things specific to you? So if I go back to Amazon, I'm not logged in at the moment, but if I were logged in, well, let me log in one second. Okay, here I am. I'm logged into Amazon. And as you can see, pick up where you left off. That's specific to me. So I looked for cheap laptops the other day. I look for headphones, I look for USB, sorry, HDMI micro to full HDMI, I look for Motorola G60s, I look for smartphones. I, so these are the things that I typically look for, right? I look for suitcases, I look for tools for opening computers and fixing stuff. So this is my Amazon search history, let's say, my Amazon stuff that I like to look for. Now, that is it being specific to me. So it is customizable in that it adapts or shows me stuff that I am interested in. If I came on here and I saw, I don't know, makeup, and I saw, uh, I don't know, shoes, or st I would never, ever buy stuff like that from Amazon. Unless someone asked me to, I wouldn't. So Amazon is showing me stuff that's specific to me. That's what customizable means. On your websites, most in most cases, I would say create a, a, a dummy account, let's say, right? So use your school email or your personal email, create an account, and just by doing that, you can browse the website for a few minutes, a few hours, and see if it starts to customize stuff for you. Amazon 100% would. Stuff like YouTube, Twitch, those definitely would as well. Maybe if the BT Sports thing, it might ask you what team do you support. And if, if, if you say Arsenal or Chelsea, it might give you specific Arsenal or Chelsea news on the hour, every hour. So that's what it means to be customizable. So is it specific to you? And uh, lastly for this section, what does it mean for a website to be flexible, right? And I forgot to put reference it as well here. So you reference whatever information you find, you reference it, reference it, reference it. Never ever put information without referencing it. It's good practice for uni and some examiners, they will look for references because none of the information is yours. You have to have gotten it somewhere else. Uh, is this website flexible? So your website that you've chosen for me, Amazon, is it flexible? If so, how? You know what flexibility means because you've read it here, you've defined it, you've rewritten it. So you need to now look at whether your website is flexible and you should know how based on the definition that you gave earlier. Um, typically, does it adapt to the device it's being used on? So on here, this is the desktop website, right? But if I went onto my mobile, now Amazon, um, Chrome did have this thing before where you could actually shrink your web page and it would turn into a mobile version, but it doesn't do that anymore for some reason. If I were on the mobile version of the website, it would show me exactly the same thing. However, it would be a bit more crunched and things would be more vertical, so going up and down rather than horizontal, right? So in that case, I would say Amazon is very flexible because if I open it on my phone, it shows me a slightly different way. If, it, if I open it on a tablet, which is slightly larger than phones nowadays, it would show me a different way. If I open it on my desktop like I am here, where am I again? Uh, here. It would show me a slightly different version as well, but I could tell that all the information would be the same. It would just be in a slightly different location. And as I've mentioned, for a mobile phone, more vertical. For a laptop, so, sorry, for a tablet, the tablet could be vertical or horizontal, right? So if you change it, it might change as well. So you might get the long view, you might get the wider view. That's what flexible means. Flexibility means that can you adapt? Can you change? Are you able to adapt and change to whatever device you're on? Some websites don't actually offer that. And if your website is not one that is flexible, so I've been on websites already on my mobile phone. And even though I'm on my mobile phone, it's still showing me the entire desktop website. And I'm sure you guys have seen that sometimes as well, where you have to actually scroll across the page. So if I shrink this down again, so this is what it would look like on some mobile phones. You, you're on the website, but you still have to scroll across the website to get to stuff you want to get to. That website has not been optimized for mobile. That website is not flexible. It simply shows you 
the desktop website even though you're on a mobile device okay so hopefully that helps that's everything i have for website requirements so please again like subscribe comment share tell your friends about it hopefully it helps everyone and then the next section we're going to be looking at is principles of website design